places. And we pray the Lord by your mercies that you may grant us time that the whole world can come again to worship you. We pray that you forgive us where we have messed ourselves. And that by your mercies you may grant us another time. Lord, we know there are those who may be watching us in difficult situations. We pray that you may undertake for every one of us, despite whatever situation he or she is. You are able to take control, to heal the sick, to revive the brokenhearted. You are able to lift those who are heavy laden. It is you, Jesus, who say it. But let us, those who are heavy laden, bring their burdens to yourselves and you give them rest. And we pray that you may give us rest even in this time. We thank you and we bless you. We pray for the help of the Holy Spirit that you may energize us spiritually and mentally and physically and keep us alert and give us the ability to hear your word and be able to apply it in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it, amen. Amen. So we go back to our text. We have been having a series of on spiritual maturity. From preaching from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. But we have been doing it in portions because it is a series. And because there are things that we need to know that are very important and that are hidden in this passage of scripture. And so, we begin in chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 10 where we dealt with why should we grow? We are talking about spiritual maturity. Why should we grow? And we dealt with this chapter 4, verse 11 and 12 where we talked about God's plan for our spiritual growth. And in that plan we saw that for us to grow spiritually it is God made us available for us, people who I called equip us. And the Bible says there are apostles, there are prophets, there are, there, are, there are prophets, there are evangelists, there are teachers and pastors. And when you go to verse 12, when you know the why of them, you find that they were given for one purpose for equipping the church. Why equip the church? So that the, the saints, equipping the saints, so that the saints may do the work of the ministry. And so with that understanding, we saw that this is where the church has had problems. Because many of us think that the pastors, the, the equipers, the some, we are called to equip the church, to build the church, and to do the work of the ministry. And that is where, because of a wrong interpretation, that the church has gotten stuck. But the Bible says they were given for equipping the church, the saints. So the focus of Jesus Christ by giving us the sum is not, the focus is not the sum. The focus is the saints. In the mind of God, in the mind of Jesus, when he is calling the pastors, when he's calling the apostles, when he's calling all, the, all these other people, it is not for them, it is for the saints. And the saints is the church. And because of not understanding that the saints who are so many has stayed in their Christian life not knowing that God expects them to do ministry. And so the ministry has been confined to the clergy. But the work of the clergy is not, is not them. It is for the saints to equip the saints. So, verse 13, where we left Sunday, on Sunday, and that is where we want to continue. It is God's, which is now part two of, of last Sunday. We are talking about God's goal for our spiritual growth. What is that God wants us from our spiritual growth? God expects something for our spiritual growth. As we continue to grow, God has got a, grow, a, a goal. And we continued from where we reached on Sunday. We read verse, chapter 4, verse 
13. Technicians, please help us. Chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, Chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, We are there. The Bible says, Verse 13, Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Till we all come. On Sunday, we saw how every one of us, the saints as well as the sum, must grow until we come to somewhere. But today we want to see where is that somewhere where the Bible says, till we all come. Where should we come to? That is what we are doing today. And on Sunday we say we saw that there must be a coming. There must be a movement. The, the pastors, the evangelists, the apostles should be helping the saints to make a move forward in their spiritual growth. And the, member, the saints must be making a move forward to, in, the, in their spiritual growth. But what is the destination? What is that till we all come? Where are we coming to? And that is our portion today in this message. Where we need to be coming to. The Bible is, say, is saying, uh, the equipping by the sum should continue until we, till we all come to what I am going to call a threefold unity. The Bible says, till we all come to the unity. And when you come to the word unity, you find three units, three unities. So every one of us, the saints, the, the, the sum should be growing toward a destination till we all come to the unity. And I'm say I'm calling it. If you are if you are writing, you can today we are talking about till we all come to a threefold unity. Till we all come to a threefold unity. That is where God is wanting us to come. Unity number one. The Bible is, is saying, till we all come to the unity of faith. Unity number one. Till we all come to the unity of faith. Till we all come to the unity of faith. So, the, the saints should be coming. The, the pastors should be equipping the saints to come until we all, all of us, are in the same unity of faith. If you read where we began, first, chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible says, in, no, no, verse 4, the Bible says there is one body, chapter 4, verse, one, chapter four, verse 14, 4 says, chapter 4, verse 4 says, there is one body, one spirit, just as they are, we are called in one hope of our calling. One Lord, one faith. There is one faith. There is one faith. We have been called to one faith. But if you look at the church today, if you look at the church today all over the world, are we in that one faith? Do we believe the same? No, there is a lot of divergency of faith even in the Christian circles. Why? And there is one faith. What has happened? And there is one faith. But because of this divergency of many faiths, because of maybe wrong interpretations or wrong hermeneutics or wrong understanding of the word of God and, 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 and putting some glasses to interpret certain, certain scriptures in the Bible by interpreting the Bible by your cultural eyes, by your lenses, by your denominational lenses, by your color lenses, by your religious lenses. We sometimes come from the scripture with, with different interpretations and so we have different faiths that come from the same word. And some of these interpretations are, are very erroneous and they lead to wrong faith. And that is why there's a lot of practice, different practices of 
whatever we are practicing today in the Christian circles. But that is not the will of Jesus Christ. The will of Jesus is Christ. All of us come to the unity of faith. So that we believe the same thing. You see? So that we believe the same thing. Because if we do right interpretation of the word of God, if you do good study of the word of God, you will come and arrive to one meaning of the Bible. The Bible was wrote, written with understanding that there is only one mean, meaning in the text. But many a time we read the Bible and they come with so different texts, different meanings, which cause different practice of, of, of our Christian life. But that is not the intention of God. The intention of God is that we go back. We go back to the word of God and help the church study the word and help the saints to come until we all come to one faith. Praise the living God. So that when we practice our faith, when we practice our faith, we have unity in practicing our faith. And when we leave the Bible and go to the word of God and stand it alone, without these other glasses that we come to the word of God, we will find that it is, able, it is possible to come to be in one faith. And that is what the Bible wants us to do. To, con to, to, to continue, to continue and to mature until we are, we have unity of one, we are unity in faith. Praise the living God. For example, what do we, there are people who see Jesus and they are Christians and they see Jesus Christ not as the son of God. But the Bible says, Jesus came. Why did he come? To seek and to save the lost. Why did Jesus come? He came, John 3:16. That's whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Why did he come? He came that we may, those who believe in him may become the sons of God. The Bible says, they that believed in him, they that believed in him, we are made to be sons of God. Many times, because of wrong interpretation, when we reject ourselves in a denomination, in a religious organization, and we are baptized, even though we have not given the Lord Jesus Christ our personal Savior, we believe we are Christians. But that is the, that's also the divergence that we get from the Christian circle. But the Bible says, they that believed in him, not those who were registered in a, in a church organization. And this is the unity that God wants us to have. Because when we have unity in our faith, when we understand the same, the Bible says, faith comes by hearing the word of God. So when the word of God is preached by the pastors from the pulpit, it must be the word of God that creates faith. And as we know the faith that we have believed in, there will be unity all over the world. But the church is full of many things because of wrong interpretations. And we cannot say we believe the same. That is why today there are those who are saying, no, you, marriage is between man and a woman. And there are others, even in the church today, who are saying, no, even if you marry a man, when you are a man, that's okay. And they believe it. And the other, the other day I read in the internet, one bishop who refused to wed a man and a man is going, is going through a charge disciplinary action because he has refused the constitution of the church. He has breached the constitution of the church. Why? Because we are not, we are not interpreting the word of God together to get the one meaning. And the bishop is saying, no, this is wrong. The word of God does not say that. And the church leadership is saying, no, our constitution does say that. So which is which? Is it the constitution or is it the Bible? And so we have divergence, we have, we have division, we have misunderstanding, and we have fightings in churches and denominations and religious circles because of wrong interpretation of the scripture that causes different faiths and their ends different practices. But the Bible says, Jesus is calling us, we pastors, to equip the church 
until we all are in unity. And if we are in unity, we are with the faith, with our believers, with the saints and us, it will call us back to go and study the word of God and remove our denominational glasses as we interpret the Bible. We remove our selfish glasses as we interpret the Bible. We remove our wrong glasses as we interpret the Bible. And they come with the eye of Jesus Christ when and ask the Holy Spirit to help us interpret the Bible correctly. And when we interpret the Bible correctly, we will find that there is only one meaning in every text. And that is the faith we should teach our members. And that is the, 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 the faith we need to teach the saints. And that is the faith we need to understand. And that is the faith Jesus wants us to come to the unity. And when we come to that unity of faith, you will find that there are no Catholic faith, there is no Catholic faith, there is no Pentecostal faith, there is no conservative faith, there is no all these other faiths. You will discover there is only one faith. The faith that comes from the word of God. And that will call our practice. And we will practice the same and it will be the same everywhere not even very other many other places even in this church there are people also believe this way and do believe this way where did you get your meaning and you will get your bible and say this is what the bible says and sometimes we do we do wrong when we interpret the bible wrongly to get a meaning to satisfy our own selfish ego or de de desire for our own selfish ends. And that is what is happening in the church today. You just interpret the Bible and teach it for your own selfish end. This is not the purpose of Jesus Christ. The purpose of Jesus Christ is to mature the church. And it is our responsibility as pastors, as leaders in the church, to interpret the Bible correctly so that when we interpret the bible correctly we will teach the saints of jesus Re remember they don't belong to us they are jesus people and he has given us to be stewards of his people the bible says in Acts chapter 20 28 take heed of yourselves and the flock which god has given you to be overseers which he has bought himself with his own blood the saints are not ours. We are only stewards. And what is that stewardship about? It is teaching them the correct doctrine, the, 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 the correct faith, so that they may practice it, so that they may live by it. Because when Jesus comes, he will demand right living from them. And if we mislead them, the Bible says it is better for that man to be taken and be thrown into, a, into the sea tied with a big rope so that he may, he, he may die, he may rot there. And that is the mistake that we do today, by teaching wrong faiths. And today there is a lot of it in the, in the church. You look at what is being preached all over, you find that we have wrong interpretations, a gear to our own selfish ends. And that is wrong. The Bible says, till we all come to the unity of faith. Say Amen. And my prayer is, with all these different faiths in the church of today, is it possible for us to come to one faith? Yes, it is. Because the Bible is plain if we want to interpret the Bible plainly without other interests. We can come to that understanding of, of, of unity in faith. The Bible says, when Jesus is going, is going to come, he's coming with his reward. Revelation chapter 22 verse 12. I'm coming with my reward to give to everyone according to, his, according to what he has done. Jesus is coming. We know there is, when we read the scripture, there is one heaven. And how do enter that heaven is by being born again, giving your life to Jesus Christ. Nicodemus came by night and he, saw, he, 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 he wanted to know how this and there are those of many Nicodemus in the church who have refused to know what Jesus said. He said, 
you must be born again for you to be registered in the book of life Jesus said it you must salvation is a must giving your life to Jesus is a must but because of lack of because of different faiths some of them things to be born again is that you just need to be registered registered in the black book of a church and you start giving tithes and you're giving offerings and you help the pastor and you do this you can do do all social works even sinners can do social work better than yourself and they are not born again social work does not save what saves is believing in jesus christ as your past as your personal savior and there are so many people lost in church business and they are not candidates of heaven why different faiths and that is why there's a lot of problems in the churches today fightings because of position fighting because of money pursuance of different things what we should be pursuing is to grow and to grow people to one to the unit number one unity of faith say unity of faith unity of faith come on say it as if you means unity of faith when you find yourself differing with a brother don't need to fight you need to go back to the scripture where are we interpreting the bible wrongly and you find that when you interpret the word the same the same there will be no fighting about faith there will be no fighting about what you believe there will be no fighting about what you what you act what you practice because you come to the unity of faith and that is what we need to do as a church to grow into the unity of faith unity number two is called the bible says till we all come to the unity of the knowledge of the son of god of christ till we all come to the unity of the knowledge of the son of god do we know jesus the same do we know who jesus is the same if i ask you who is jesus and you are a member of the church how will you tell me jesus is different understanding about jesus christ causing different response to jesus christ response the calling causing different dealing with jesus christ how do we know jesus why was he born as he was born follow jesus follow jesus from when the angel told mary you shall give birth to a son and his name will be emmanuel what the, what did the angel say for he will take his people from sin he will come when he comes he come to deal with the sin which is sin the bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and the bible says again in romans the wages of sin is what is death and so jesus came to a me for a mission to deal with the sin that was brought in by adam in the garden garden of eden and now jesus comes as the second adam to deal with the disobedience of the garden of eden so that he may restore us to jesus to god so that he may bring us again to god but now we sing about jesus we talk about jesus we preach about jesus we have degrees about studying jesus we have phds we have people who eat from teaching about jesus and one a time when a time when i was in africa international university and we were with dr wood and he was teaching us and he gave us a big book like this it was written by one of the leading scholars of theology and it was very erroneous very very erroneous it was it was totally a error and i looked at dr wood and i asked him dr wood how can such a learned man write a book like this and they looked at me and smiled and said daniel people have to eat i know you do not know what i've said 
He said, people have to eat. Wrong writing about Jesus Christ. Because people just talk and write, get degrees and write papers about Jesus Christ, but some of them very erroneous, very different. And that is why cults have come up. False doctrine and the religions, because we don't understand Jesus Christ. He came to die for our sins. He was born by a Virgin Mary. He grew up and died on the cross. When he died on the cross, he said, it is, it is finished. Now you can believe me. And I'm going and I'm coming. What am I going to do? I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I finish that place, I'm coming for you, guys. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. If you understand that, if you understand the knowledge, if you have the right knowledge of who Jesus is, you will not lift your denomination above Jesus Christ. You will not lift your bishop above Jesus Christ. You will not lift anything about Jesus, above Jesus Christ. You will lift Jesus Christ above every one of us. You will worship him. You will reference him. You will serve him. You will live pleasing to him, a life that is pleasing to him because you are convinced he, he came and died and finished his sin. And he has gone and he is coming. The next thing we are waiting for all over the world, which is going to cover the world better than Corona. It is the trumpet that is going to about sound. As Jesus comes from the skies, calling us back home. And if you have that right understanding of who Jesus is, you will live an expectant life. Not to get rich. Not to have a name. You will live expectantly waiting for the trumpet because it can sound any time and the only thing you would be anticipating in your life is to for the second to hear the trumpet and as you drive as you are in your business as you are teaching as you are treating people in the hospital as you are teaching people in, in, the, in the in the in school as i'm preaching and as you are doing everything you will be sensitive to your in your spiritual life and awake he can come anytime. When you have the right understanding of Jesus Christ, it will affect your life and the way you live. Because he's the one who said, two will be sleeping in one bed, one will be taken. That means he can come at night. The Bible says, two women will be grinding in the same, one will be taken, one will be left. And that means he can come at any time. And so you, you will live an expectant life. Waiting for the sound of the trumpet. Which can come any time in the sky. Because you have got the right understanding and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. The carelessness we have today. The sin that has engulfed the church today. The careless living that we are living today. Sin, living in sin and taking other things that are more important than the coming of Jesus Christ because of our wrong understanding of Jesus Christ is a sure evidence that we don't have the right knowledge of Jesus Christ. If we had the right knowledge of Jesus Christ, we would do everything, everything that we can to live right because we are waiting for we because we know any moment can be Jesus moment. Amen. Buana sifiwe. Any moment can be what? Jesus moment. And he can come and take us home anytime when he wants. And that is why we go back to chapter 4 of verse 1 Ephesians, walking worthy of the calling. Every step that you make you will walk worthy because you know Jesus Christ can come anytime. And when sin seems to come around you, you will call upon the blood of Jesus to cleanse you so that you live right because the Bible says in Revelation chapter 21, no sin, no th nothing unclean will get in there. And that is Jesus who said. So you will live a very careful life, a very holy life. 
knowing that Jesus Christ, my Lord, can come for me at any time. And there's no time to waste, to live in sin. But because we have not come to that unity of the knowledge of Jesus Christ, churches are full of fighting, gossiping, murmuring, immorality, fighting against position. Even I was told some are going to the witch doctors to, to bewitch others. Where do you get Satan witchcraft in church? Because of wrong understanding of who Jesus is. And the Bible is saying, till we all come, and ladies and gentlemen, we need to purify. We need to cleanse our understanding of our knowledge of Jesus Christ. Unity number three is what I call unity. We come to the unity of Christ likeness. Christ likeness. And that screen is not working. Unity of Christ likeness. The Bible says in chapter 4, first, chapter 4, verse 13 where we where we are still the bible says chapter 4 verse 13 we read again till we all come to the unity of faith that is number one number two of the knowledge of the son of god unit number two unity number three what i call christ likeness and what is that christ likeness the bible is saying to we come to the unity of of that to a we come to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. To a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And that is all what I'm gathering to say, unity of Christ likeness. Until all of us come to a, to, to the, to a perfect man, to, to perfect manhood, another translation says that, to a perfect man would. And I want to deal with that, that translation. Until we come out to a perfect man would, we grow up from being babies. And we come to perfect man would. We become men. We become men. We grow to be men. And when men grow to be men and they are mature, they are not babies. When they are men, they go and marry. When they are men, they grow. They, they have a family. When they are men and they are, they are grown up, they, they help, they work for their families, they raise their children, they raise their families. They can be depended upon by the government, by the church, by the community, because they are grown up. They are not babies. Say amen. To perfect manhood, we grow to become men, mature, like Christ. God is leading us, every one of us, to come to that place. And you remember we began this series by reading Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, where Paul is saying, I travail to you again until Christ is formed in you again. Why? When Paul looked at the Galatians and he preached to them, they accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. And he taught them, and Christ grew in them. How does Christ grow in someone? How does Christ grow in someone? When you know Jesus Christ and you are born again as a sinner and you come to Jesus Christ, you are taught the word of God that you need to leave sin. You need to leave these bad habits and you, still, you start leaving the bad habits one by one. Gossiping, you leave it. Murmuring, you leave it. Immorality, you leave it. Stealing, you leave it. Until the word of God, until you start living, patterning your life according to the word of God. So that when you, when I tell you, why don't you smoke? You don't tell me, ah, I, I, I don't feel like smoking. When I smoke, it bothers me. Some people do that. No. You say, because I am born again. I am a Christian. Why don't you drink? No, I am a Christian. Why don't you do this? I believe in Jesus Christ. Until when we look at you, we see you acting the Bible the way it is. And you don't do, you don't do these other things because you don't like them. You do these other things because they are not biblical, because they are wrong, because they are not according to the word of God. 
and you, when we look at you, we see Christ. And if we want to see Christ, we come to look at you. Why? Because you live like Christ. The church in Antioch, when Jesus went above, and they were left, and the world looked at them, they say, these guys are followers of that Jesus. And they act and talk and behave like him. And they were called who? Christians. Christians was a nickname. They look like Christ. I know a Christian. Why? They look like Christ. Ukiwaangalia tu. Awafanyi. Kila Yesu Christo alikuwa awafanyi. Afanyi. Awafanyi. Vile Yesu Christo alikuwa anasungumuza. Wanasungumuza. Vile Yesu Christo alikuwa anabiaivu. Wanabiaivu. They are. They look like Christ. They are Christians. So when we want to see Christ, we look at you. When the villagers want to see Jesus, they see you. When your workmates want to see Jesus, they see you. Because you have grown from being a baby to mature manhood. Now you look like Christ. So as we come into a Christian walk, we want to grow to that, to that threefold unity. Number one, to the unit of what? Faith, we believe the same. And when we believe the same, we'll act the same because we know the same. Why are we putting these masks? I have mine. Why are we putting this mask? Because we know the same. We have been taught by the government and the medical people about Corona. And now we know the same. And that is why everyone, even if he's not wearing it, you look at him in the pocket, there's a, there's a mask. Why? Because we know the same about Corona. And we know when you put the mask, it will prevent your infection, it will pre prevent infecting others. And so that is where we are putting it. We have come to the same unity. Come on. We have come to the same what? Unity of understanding about Corona. And that is why there is a mask in everyone. Now, Corona came last year. We are all under, coming in the same, the whole world is the same unity about Corona with the masks. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. We have never come to the unity of understanding who Jesus is. This is the foolishness in the church. And if we understand, come to the unity of faith, all of us the church, the whole world will have effect, will, have, will be impacted by the church. If we came to the unity of understanding who Jesus Christ is, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the soon coming King who is coming to take us home, we will put our spiritual masks because when he comes and they find us not holy, you go to hell. When he finds you careless, not having you put your, your lamp on, like the foolish ladies, yours will be, the, will be hell. But when we know who Jesus is, is we will keep our, our, banner, our lamps burning. We will keep holiness. We will keep righteousness. We will not joke around with his sin. Because we know sin can plunge us into everlasting domination in hell. But we have not come to that. And that is why we are having the games we are having in the church, in the name of our denominations, in the name of our religious wrong interpretation of the scripture. I was talking to one man and he told me, I am not saved because I am a... And he talked... He talked about his denomination. If there's any denomination that does not advocate for people giving their life to Jesus Christ and being born again, that is a denomination that is taking people to hell. 
Because the Bible says, they that believed in him we are given the power to become sons of God. And the Bible says, Though that believed in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And there is only one way to Jesus to heaven. The Bible says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, to the Father, except through Jesus Christ. Where is your denomination placed there? Where is your religious place there? Where is your bishop blessed there? It is not through your denomination. It's not through your bishop. It's not through your whatever. It's through Jesus Christ. He's the only way. I thought you were going to clap hands there. Jesus is the only way to heaven. Period. But do you believe it with all your heart? If you did, if you did, you would have believed in him. We have so many people in the church even who are preaching the gospel today and their positions in the church who have not accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior and is the only door to heaven where are you taking your people so three four units that God is leading us to unity of faith Unity of the Son of the Lord of God, of the Son of God, of the knowledge of the Son of God, and a unity of Christ likeness. God expects you and I to grow to a level where the pastor, where the pastor, where the pastor and the members they are on the same path when it comes to the faith where it comes to knowledge of Jesus and the Christ likeness when they look at me when they look at you they see Christ so that we don't mind anymore who mind who matters is Christ in us who is the hope of glory that is what we must all be growing to Praise the living God. Praise the living God. When anybody looks at me, he sees Christ. When anybody looks at you, he sees Christ. And all of us, we become Christ-like. That is the ultimate growth of, the, of our growth, of our spiritual life. And when the church reaches there, the impact will be so great and will be felt in every corner of the world. And that is what the early church did. And that is where, what we are missing today. And that is what God wants us to do. And may God bless you as you desire, every one of us. Every time you hear the word of God, every time you listen to the word of God, every time you study the word of God, till we all finish. Till we, come on, till we all, till we all, Come on, till we all, till we all. Yesterday I gave an, exam, an example of Morris and I want to repeat again as I finish. Would you mind coming here? Just a moment. David, David, smama apo, smama, smama apo. David, kuja, smama apo, smama apo nyuma. Once upon a time, Morris was like that boy. In fact, he was a toddler. He was a toddler. He was a baby. And I was the father. And I was raising him. I remember one time bringing him to doctor, bringing him here from all over from the hills, carrying him to doctor, doctor Maniki to come and be treated. A young man. And I took a photo with him from one of the studios here. Carrying him. Baby. Growing him up. A baby like this. Now, I fed him, he was cooked food for, he grew to here. Now, when he's here, he came and told me, Dad, I'm not a young man now, boy, I had to get married. I said, God, God, bring me a lady. He brought me Mama Andrea. And they married. Today he has a family, like a family. Now he's doing what I, now he and me come here. He has come 
He has come. Come on. Till we all come. He has come. Now, when we talk like Wazes, we talk like Wazes now. Unlike what I would do with him when he was this. We talk like Wazes. Daddy, when a woman, a wife, behaves like this, how did you make it? How did you do it? I tell you, ah, this is simple, this is how you do it. You just bring chips and um, <laughs> now you're in Asia. <laughs> what? I, I, I want to buy a kashamba. I, I, how can I come and, come, come and see kashamba? I, 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 I saw. I, oh, this, uh, you buy that one. We are talking men, men, grown up men, business. Why? Because he has, he has come. And he helped me, he helped me to do that for his, for Avia. She got married. She, he helped me to, Avia came. He helped me to do that with Miriam, the last born getting families and whatever they until we have all come now we have all come in our family we don't talk baby discussions we don't talk baby issues we talk of manhood grown-up men discussions the other day who you are you going daddy where are you going daddy wait for me he throws me in the car behind. I drive him. Daddy, what is that? Daddy, what is that? Daddy, you are nani? Daddy, now you are a nani? Asking me questions on the road. A thousand and one questions as I'm driving him. But today, the discussion has changed. The discussion has what? Yesterday, we were in Masai land. Daddy, you are going to Maasai, yes. Uh, okay. Let us meet there. Not getting into my car. <laughs> because the discussion, he has come. And in the morning he called me, Daddy, where are you? I told him, because I went on, on Friday, I spent in Nchula. Are you still there? Yeah, wait for me there. I'm coming. He drove. In his car, in my car, we went and we preached the gospel and we came. We came to the same, the same hotel again and uh, we ate Nyamachoma and he paid. But the, in the other time, who was paying? Me. But now the game has changed. Why has this changed? He has come. Come on, you need to clap hands. My business with him is not now, it's not like when I was, no, this is Musui's son, David. How Musui, Musui is dealing with David, his business with David is not my business with the Morris. Come on, Muina Muina was a quadia. Musui, Musui are gonna business na David. But the way they talk, the way they behave is not the way I behave with, with Morris. Why? He has come. <laughs> David is still coming. You understand? Musui buys chips for David. Morris buys chips to me. Business has changed. <laughs> but now the problem is the spiritual children take time to grow and I don't know what is the issue. In the name of Jesus, the church must come and must grow to manhood for business to change. <laughs> Coronavirus is the one who has shown us all this, the members that we have are Children who left their fathers, their pastors, at the very wrong time. And today we have pastors who have closed their churches because the members disappeared in the thicket. 
utoto business changes at maturity you are not here business changes at what maturity so you who are babies in this church come up grow to manhood amen and that is why churches are stuck because children will never do mature business thank you no come finish hallelujah Rima ka rababo sindari laba. Rika